Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is your girl Tashi and I am back with another video. So this one here, I'm gonna react to uh, how to piss off the English. Oh God. <laughs> All right, let's get straight to it. <laughs> hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters Brew and say we're in Chester, England and today we're gonna talk about are some of the kind of faux pas or traveler faux pas that travelers do when they travel to England that might upset the locals, okay? Because we don't want to upset the locals when we're here because the English are super awesome to tourists when they come here. So be awesome to them, all right? And the first thing that tourists mm. sometimes upset the locals with, and it might be different in your country than here, that's queue jumping. <coughs> jumping the line, skipping the line. Ooh, ooh. Look, in England, queue culture is a thing. You follow the line, you get behind the person behind you and you wait your turn. Whether you're getting on the tube, the train, at a store, the shop, the post office, wherever, it's always a nice queue waiting in line and no one complains about it. If you try to like do the bum rush thing to get on the trains or, or get into shops and stuff like that, don't be surprised if someone says, excuse me, sir, because that's not something that happens here, okay? So- That's the most annoying thing. I hate that. People don't have no consideration for other people at all, at all. I hate it. I hate people who skip other people who feel like they're titled to be in front of everybody else. And I'm entitled to be in front of you. And like, it's so annoying. Make so, sure so annoying. In line. And there's certain people, certain tourists, we know who you are. Okay. Make sure you're not queue jumping. Another thing to guarantee to upset a local, and this isn't really a, a tourist thing that tourists do, but something that's guaranteed to upset the locals. It's just two words engineering work or maybe you might hear this replacement bus service mm. or industrial action look anything that makes public transportation not work right that will annoy the english because it might be that hey we are working on the train lines or this service is not happening right now and that's one of those things that you can literally see the the kind of disappointment come over their faces when you hear the words engineering work and you're like oh replacement bus service you literally see their souls leaving their bodies. And the thing is, when you come here to England, you'll notice the people are very polite. I mean, not everybody, you know, but in general, people in England are very polite, they're very mannerly. And if you're not mannerly and polite when you're here, that does upset the locals. They do expect a thank you, a please, and they're gonna say excuse me, they bump into you and expect the same thing there. That's why pushy tourists and, and tourist groups that just kind of shove through things. Those are things that people in England don't really like very much. It's that kind of irks them. So make sure you are minding your P's and Q's and you're, you're being polite when you are going around. And I know that's something that people say, well, you should do that anywhere. Well, yeah, it's true. But in some places, a shove here, a push there isn't really a big deal. Mm. Here, it's not really cool, okay? So, you know, be polite when you are here. Now, another thing for my American friends that will always get your English friends to kind of roll their eyes at you is if you call football soccer. Look. Oh. Football because you kick it with your... <laughs> I, I'm glad I, you know, that's one thing I've learned also. I try not to call it when I'm talking to my British uh, viewers and my British uh, subscribers. Well, viewers, subscribers, same thing. But you know what I mean? Um, I always I never try to call it uh, soccer. I always call it football. But if I'm talking to an American person, I have to say soccer because then they'll get they will get it mixed up. You know what I'm saying? Because we, cause we call, what you call football, we call soccer. Which I don't understand why we don't call it football. I never understood that. <laughs> I don't understand why we never call it football. And then give the football a different name. You know, the, the, the football, American football. I don't know why we don't give it a different name. Because, you know, there's other names they could have came up with. But I don't know. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Her foot. They'll have plenty of ways to disparage American football when you call football soccer here. So just don't, just call it footy, call it football. Just, just, just stay that way. Talk about the Cowboys. You go back to the U.S. It's fine. Okay. I know yeah. the Jaguars play here in England occasionally, but come on. Football is football. Soccer is silly so to them. Now, another <laughs> thing that might irk your English friends is if you kind of think that everybody's from London or everything is I modern know. London, which you have to realize is England is an, a, a whole country. It's not just one city of London. And that's why if you're coming to a place like Chester or you're going to York or whatever, or you meet somebody from here and they go, oh, I'm from York, I'm from Chester. Like, oh, is that near London? No, dude, London's in the south of England. We're in the north of England. There's even the Midlands in between us. Okay, so that's one of those things that people do kind of get upset. They're like, look, there's more to this beautiful country than just London. I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm guilty for that. I, growing up, I used to always, I used to always hear people say, 
uh, they would say England, 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 but I never learned about the other part of the UK. You know, there's other parts. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a pretty big country. You know, but yeah, <laughs> you get so confused. And that's why it kind of irks them because you'll see that people are very proud of their local village. Of their like same thing as New York. I hate when people think that New York City is the whole state when it's really not. Like New York itself is big, is huge. But when they think of you know when, when if I say New York, they'll say they'll think of oh the city or they think of rats and being dirty and filthy. Oh New York. It's like okay, but you're talking about a sm you're talking about a small part of New York. You're talking about the city. You're talking about the city. You know, you're not like New York is big. It's a huge state. You know, we have upstate. It's big. It's huge. And people make fun and say, "Oh, New York is dirty. I would never go to New York." What part of New York are you talking about? <laughs> are you talking about the city? Are you talking about the whole state? Because I'm so confused. Because there's some beautiful part. There's some beautiful places in New York. Some beautiful place. I'm telling you. Their local shire. Their local area. You know. So you do have that. But it doesn't matter where you are in England. Where you know. North, south, midlands. Wherever. Another thing that's going to really upset them. Mm -hmm. Is you make them a bad cup of tea. Okay. Because getting a cup of. Getting a cup of tea here is really, really an important thing. And, and make sure you're making it right. So if you look online, you'll see like English people like pulling the hair out that they still have left of their head when they see people microwaving water. I, who's doing this? Who is, who's putting water in the microwave? Who's doing that? Like, why are you doing that? That is so, <laughs> that is so lazy. So lazy. And for the people who saying Americans don't have uh, kettles and we don't have water, these electric water, we have all of those stuff here. So I'll be like, what, what, what Americans are you talking about? Because <laughs> most Americans have water kettles. I'm assuming I thought most of us have water kettles. And what is a bad tea? I'm going to let him continue. What is a bad tea though? And you'll see your hotel, your inn, your bed and breakfast. They'll probably have a kettle in your room that you can use in order to, to make tea in your own room. All right. So make it a bad cup of tea. Straight off way to get them to go. Oh, dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Another thing that'll probably annoy your English friends is if you go out and you order beers and you make fun of their ales because they love their ales and you start ordering things like Coors, which is an American beer. When you're in a great city like Chester, come on, get the local brews when you're here. Your English friends aren't going to like it if you're not drinking local with them. Okay. Another not cool thing that tourists sometimes do is they go out with locals and then they skip out on their round. Okay, here in the UK and in, in England and Britain and all around over here, people like to go out to the pubs with their buddies. And you go out and everybody's getting rounds. So you go out with four buddies, realize that you're going to have four rounds. Okay, you're going to be drinking four beers. Just accept it. That's the way it is. And you're going to pay for one of those rounds. And if you're that friend that like skates out, like, oh, get the first couple. Then you're like, oh, I got to go. They're like, dude, I bought a round. He bought a round. Why aren't you getting your round? That, that's going to end some friendships and get you not invited back out to the pub. So don't what? skip out on the round because don't you be lose skipping. friends on that. It could be quite annoying and quite rude, really. Now, another thing that kind of, I don't know if I understand, but it just gets more of the eye-rolling nature that people have when tourists come to England is when they try their British, British accent. Yeah, just don't. Just don't. Don't. I would never try to do that. I can never know how to sound like a British person to save my life. <laughs> I try, but I sound so silly trying to sound British. It don't sound right. So I just don't even try. I just, I just leave it. I'll just leave that alone to y'all. That's, that's your accent. <laughs> and I love me some British accent. I'll be trying to learn how to sound like a British person, but I can't do it. I can't. Stop, I'm not, not going to do it. Just stop. Because I sound stupid. You speak English. Speak English how you speak English. Yeah. yeah you try to copy the <laughs> accent. And I know people, they go to Texas and they go to the south of the U.S. try to mock the accent and, and imitate the accent. And they use it up like a, looking like a fool. Here, it's the same thing. Now, I will tell you this. The people here in England, they'll never tell you that anything you do here will upset them or annoy them. Because that's not how they are. But it's one of those things that you probably want to know so you don't look a fool. Now, another thing I think is important is... When you come into England, it's very much, it's not always prim and proper. There's some prim and properness. There's some etiquette out there. And I think one of the etiquette things that some tourists don't realize is you always want to leave a little space. So if you're on public transportation, you're on the bus, you're not sitting right next to the person. 
you take you leave a seat in between if the train's not full you're not sitting right next to somebody you're leaving a space in between if you're going to the bathroom and there's urinals you don't hike up right next to the next person there if there's other open urinals so give people a little space when you're here because they like a little space they're not up in your i'm the same way too give me space especially if i'm on y'all call it cute but we call it line especially if i'm on line um i don't like when someone is so close behind me it's like it's so freaking annoying like so so annoying like i i don't like people breathing like right here like if i'm standing here don't give me space you know that's why i love when we uh the whole um what you call it um when we had to stay like six feet from each other and when we had the what we call it um the virus thing that happened oh my god i forgot about it already um yeah i used to love the whole six feet away i love it like just give me some space especially driving to i don't like people driving so uh so close behind me like give me space you don't gotta be all up close to me i hate it it's so annoying so i know how y'all feel stuff here in england okay i hate now, that i realize this next <laughs> one might seem a little counterintuitive but honestly if you tell people that it rains all the time when you come to england that doesn't go over well either i know whenever we mention weather in any of our videos about england people say well last summer we had 40 degrees celsius and we had sun and and you're right the weather here it doesn't rain all the time i mean i know it's rainy now it was actually beautiful sunny earlier today when i was going and seeing the sights i should have filmed then but honestly you i mean i've gotten sunburned three different times visiting england okay in the summertime it can be really sunny it can be bright but yes it does rain occasionally but not all the time and if you act like it's always raining you need your wellies all the time and your umbrella all the time no you don't okay and even the locals will be like yeah yeah i don't know now he's saying he, he made a he okay so he made a video talking about um the uk how it'd be raining so much over there and he's the same one that said you always got to make sure you have an umbrella on you because it rains a lot now he's saying it doesn't rain a lot walters you made a video talking about it you always got to make sure you have an umbrella when you come to visit you have to have an umbrella <laughs> you you said it now now it doesn't rain that much out there i'm so confused it rains a lot but not all the time especially it rains a lot now, another thing that might annoy the locals here is if you don't you know still gotta have an umbrella between the united kingdom of great britain and northern ireland great britain britain england scotland wales how they're all kind of different entities because people from scotland identify as scottish then the welsh identify as welsh and the english identify as english but some of them are okay with being british but the thing is if you call somebody from scotland english or you call somebody from english scottish a lot of those people take that as an insult for different ways. And I'm sure people down below will tell me if you tell somebody Scottish or they're like a Scotsman, what that means, or they're like a Welsh, what that means, or what they're, if they're English, what that means. There's a lot of different connotations that are there. So make sure you know where people are from before you blankly say, oh, you're Scottish, you're Welsh, you're English, you're Irish, you're whatever. Because that's one thing that might upset people. And then there's three words that will probably make your English friends go, dude, you need to learn some English. And that is, <laughs> math aluminum and garage because here they don't say math aluminum and garage they say mass they say aluminium and they say garage garage okay? so just know that though we speak the same language sometimes we pronounce it completely differently and so that's why sometimes we kind of roll our eyes at each other and also pronunciation you know can be that's the only thing that irritates me i hate when people make fun how the way someone pronounce certain things we we're, di we're in a different di we're all from different countries there's nothing wrong pronouncing something different that's what made the world beautiful you know makes the world different you know i don't think we should be making fun of the people how the way they pronounce certain things that's just how we was raised and that's how we was born and raised you know we should you know at least you know have a little respect for each other you know you understand what i'm saying i understand what you're saying Sometimes when I've ordered food or I've ordered stuff at stores, people kind of like chuckle at me. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get that for you. Yank. And they kind of walk over and get stuff. So some of these things are really annoying. Some of them are kind of silly stuff. That's kind of silly. I just wanted you to know a few things that tourists might do that might make their hosts uncomfortable or annoy them or just make them roll their eyes in silliness. So, so what are things you see tourists do here in England that really have... Yeah, that's the only thing that irritates me. Like, it's, it's people are making fun of the people how they pronounce certain things like it's like i understand what you're saying and i'm gonna you know i'm gonna help you you know 
but if it's something like something I never heard of, then I will ask them like, you know, like, what are you talking about? You know, because I, I see a lot of videos, people going back and forth, especially on social media. You know, and you have the British making fun of Americans, how the way we call certain things, how we pronounce certain things. And um, then you have the Americans making fun of the British, how the way they say stuff. It's like, it's, can, can we stop? It's so annoying. It is so, so annoying. Like, I understand what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying. Why do we have to make fun of each other? You know, it's, it's starting to get very annoying now. <laughs> So, so annoying. But anyway, let me know how you feel about this video and I'll see y'all later. Peace.